Hey friend, Chris here from Logic Pro Rules, the website and channel that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Today, I wanna to show you how you can customize Logic Pro's undo history. I know, incredibly exciting stuff. However, if you have ever wished for the ability to undo or redo a fader adjustment, pan knob adjustment, send level, mute or solo in the mixer, you can actually include that in the undo history. Same goes for plugins. So if you make an adjustment in a plugin, such as Fat Effects, Chroma Glow, and EQ, and you say, uh, maybe I'm not so sure about that, you can undo or redo those steps as well. You just have to enable them in the undo history. However, there are some things to keep in mind if you decide to go down this path. Logic Pro's undo history kind of has like a fork in the road, choose your own adventure sort of aspect to it. So let me show you right now. Okay, so let's say I'm producing a recording. I'm doing all sorts of stuff in this project at a breakneck speed. I select these regions, press Command and R to repeat them. I decide I don't need tambourine in this next section, so let me select the region and press Delete. In the MIDI region here, let me pop open the piano roll and let's bring this note here from G4 up to B4. Right, so all these things are occurring. At a certain point, I may decide, you know what? I'm not entirely sure if that piano note should be there. Maybe I should have left it in its original position. So I'll hold Command and press Z to undo. And I can even hold Shift, Command, and Z to redo. That way I can compare before and after. If we go back to the tracks area, I'll press Command and Z, Command and Z. Right, it's beautiful that we can go backwards and forwards in time through the various actions we've taken in Logic Pro. And there's actually a whole window dedicated to these steps in your undo history. You can view this by going right up to the top to edit, and the third option down, click on Undo History. Check it out. At this moment, there are 12 actions that have occurred in this project, and I can cycle through these different steps just by clicking on the action. By clicking on Action 11 for Delete, I've once again deleted the Tambourine region, or I could jump back two steps. Here, I'm back to where I started. If I click on Action 12, I bring back all of the steps I've committed so far on camera. Now, it should be no secret to anyone, but by going back a few undo steps, if I make a new change, for example, if I adjust maybe this bass player region right here and cut it in length, the steps that were undone, that were not highlighted in the undo history window have now disappeared because I've charted a new course into the future. Cool, so this should be of no surprise to anyone working on a Mac. Now, if we go to the mixer, and if I make any sort of change, let's say I adjust the volume for this bass track, nothing seems to occur in the undo history here. The wide clav, nothing. Panning, nothing. Removing a plugin, all right, we have something. But these changes in terms of muting, soloing, panning adjustments, fader adjustments, they're not available as an undo step. And the same goes for plugins. So I'll adjust the drive in Chroma Glow, and I don't see that step available in the undo history. Of course, you don't have to be an eagle-eyed viewer to see right in the upper right-hand corner of this window is the option to include parameter changes from both the mixer and plugins. When I click on the mixer, look at that, there's a slew of undo steps related to the mixer. And if I include plugins, there's the drive adjustment I made with Chroma Glow. All right, so if we see this in action, I undo, Chroma Glow's drive returns to 18%. I unmute my channel strip. I bring back a remove plugin, but we seem to have lost some undo steps now, right? If I redo, you notice then there's some funny business going on here in the undo history because some steps disappeared and then they returned. This is really important to keep in mind. Logic Pro kind of keeps this like choose your own adventure of undo and redo steps in the mixer. For example, if I adjust the level, undo, and then adjust the level for the clav, we still have that undo step for the percussion. So if I undo, we revert back to the last active undo step, remove plugin from channel strip. And if I redo, we redo the Chroma Glow drive adjustment, the studio percussion volume adjustment, and the wide soft clav adjustment. What I'm getting at here is that things might not be what they seem when you use undo and redo. Just to further illustrate, I'll adjust fat effects here and adjust the release. So if I go back two steps and adjust release again for FedFX, 
The soft clav is still in action. If I go back even further, adjust this, check it out. So really my point here is, is that you have the ability to add mixer undo steps, plug in undo steps to Logic Pro's undo history. So you could cycle through these options, right? So again, redo, 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 undo, undo, undo. But you have to keep in mind that functions related to different channel strips in the mixer, different plugins in the mixer, and functions within the tracks area all kind of have their own undo history unto themselves. And this can get confusing if you do decide to enable these options for mixer and plugin. It's easy with this window open, but let's close it. And let me now make this adjustment, undo, make this adjustment, undo, redo, redo, and redo. Now I pressed redo four different times, but the first two times we didn't see anything actually occur. So we got to go back to the undo history here and try to figure out why that's the case. And that's because the adjustments to Chroma Glow, as well as Fat Effects, those were part of the undo history. Kind of becomes dangerous territory here. So number one, you can include mixer and plugin adjustments in the undo history. So you can undo and redo those functions. Number two, there's interesting behavior when it comes to adjusting one channel strip versus another, one plugin versus another, and where you are in the undo history. Number three, the point I want to leave you with here is that certain things that you undo may not be visible to you on screen. And so you got to tread carefully. So personally, I prefer to not include plugin adjustments. I will include mixer adjustments, even though things can still get a little funny. But the reason I include mixer adjustments is because I tend to have the mixer open when I decide to undo a step, right? So again, adjust this fader. Then maybe I decide, you know what? I want to go back to the original level position. Undo. I can visually see what just happened. Okay, it returned to its original spot. And if I decide to redo, I might go, hey, why did the wide clav just bump in level? What, what, what's going on there? So let me undo, right? I tend to be in the mixer looking at the mixer when I make these changes. But a plugin, I may not be looking at. So I say, you know what? I want to bring back that wide soft clav volume. Redo. Hey, what's going on? Nothing has happened here. Redo again. What, what is going on here? Redo. Okay, the white soft clav made that jump, but I'm getting skittish about these undo steps I'm not seeing. And that's why I don't enable the option for plugins because it's not always the case that a plugin window is going to be open for me anyways when I undo. In that case, I much prefer to use the undo and redo steps in a plugin window. So if I make this adjustment, all right, I now have the option to undo. Okay, redo. Perfect. I can see exactly what's going on. There's no worry of extra steps occurring unknowingly to me. And I love to make an adjustment and then copy. It's great because I can use the compare button to compare the before and after, right? This is how the plugin was when I opened it. I can compare my adjustment, but sometimes the compare button may react in a way that you weren't expecting. And that way I can paste the adjustment and say, okay, that's what my change was. Let me compare, let me paste, just in case. Last thing I'll leave you with here, sometimes you may see that a plugin doesn't show you the undo and redo steps in the header of the plugin window. And it's not because they're not there because you just saw on screen, they were there. It's because the plugin window is not big enough to reveal those buttons. By adjusting the plugin window size by using this drop-down menu, or by clicking, holding, and dragging on the bottom right-hand corner for Logic Pro plugins, you can adjust the size to reveal the functions that you're looking for. Okay, so I know undo history is maybe not the most exciting thing in the world, but this can be a huge help for those of us who maybe, you know, just want the ability to undo or redo something in the mixer or in the plugin windows. But you do have to keep in mind that there's sort of this fork in the road, this sort of choose your own adventure, depending on what you undo or redo and where you are in the list of steps. So I just wanted to share that with you and why I choose to include mixer steps in the undo history, but not plugins. And I hope this video was helpful for you and I'll check you for more later next week. Take care.